How are we doing, guys? Liverpool 6, Leeds United 0. Post-match reaction to the game. Uh, just come back from Anfield. I'm a shell shocked. Yes and no. Yes and no. Um, I really didn't think it would get that bad tonight. I think there's always a risk when you play a team as good as Liverpool, a team as good as City, that, you know what, if they're clinical on the day, they can beat you 5 or 6 or 7. Or, you know, they can score goals. You know, at the end of the day, that is the reality. We face a Liverpool team today that's got three of the top scorers in the league. The Sorry, the three top scorers in the league. Mohamed Salah, um, Diogo Jota, Sadio Mane and the top three assisters in the league. Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mo Salah and Andy Robertson. This is what we face today. But I'm broken hearted, to be honest with you. Um, and I don't use that word lightly because watching that today was tough. It was a tough watch, to be totally honest with you. It just, yeah, it was a really, really tough watch. Uh, made so many notes on the game, looking down here. A lot of things I want to address from the game. But yeah, I just didn't see it being that bad today. I think it's fair to say all season we've had a problem against the top teams. You know, in terms of competing against the top teams. I'm not, it's not so much the result that bothers me tonight or the result in any of these games. It's the fact we haven't been able to compete. I think last season, yes, we lost games heavily last season, but we were competitive. We were still competitive and we got caught on the counter or you know the other team was clinical and all these different bits and pieces. But today, 6-0 was a fair reflection in, in all honesty. Liverpool had chances. You know, at least I counted at least four, five clear cut chances that Liverpool missed. I think Salah's missed two. Uh, Luis Diaz missed a one on one. Fabinho's missed one, which is ricocheted back into him in the first half to make it 4 0 before half time. Um, there's a couple of other ones as well that I'm forgetting about as well. And there was just, it wasn't a 6 0. A 6 0 where you're thinking, yeah, it, it was 6 0 because they score from every shot on target and, and things like this. It was a fair reflection of the game. In all honesty, I think we got away with nil tonight, to be honest. Um, it was difficult. And look, this can happen against Liverpool, but it's been a constant theme against these top teams and teams at high press, really. You know, I think you've seen in that game against Southampton earlier in the season, Brighton, um, Everton a few weeks ago. They're not top teams, but they're press high as well. And I'm going to go on to that as well, why I think. We're having problems against these teams. Um, and tonight, let's be totally honest about it, we were pulled to pieces tonight. And as much as I say 6-0 is a fair reflection, I don't actually think Liverpool were that good in compared to what I've seen from Liverpool this season. I've seen Liverpool play much better than that this season. Um, yeah, they, they might not have won the game by more than six, but Liverpool weren't at full tilt tonight. You know, Sadio Mane played up top. And to be honest with you, I thought Sadio Mane had the quiet game. He still walks off the pitch with two goals. And that's a poor reflection on us tonight. It is a poor reflection. There's nothing worse for me as a football fan than being told you're easy to play against. And I've spoken to Everton fans after we played Everton. I've spoken to a couple of, a couple of other fans tonight. And that's a constant theme that they felt were easy to play against. There's nothing worse to hear about than that, because that's something that's never happened for us under Marcelo Bielsa. Yes, we've lost games, but we've never been easy to play against. We've never been, you know, a game where you feel totally comfortable in. That's what I felt with for Liverpool tonight. I felt Liverpool were comfortable from pretty much the first 10 minutes. Yes, we had that moment where Dan James intercepted, uh, took the ball off Alison Becker. But really, after that, I think that really woke Liverpool up a little bit, in all honesty. Um, and yeah, from 10 minutes on, they get the penalty. And it's just completely controlled from Liverpool at that point. And, and really, I, I do think Liverpool are playing in second gear. Some Liverpool fans who watch this might disagree with me, but I've seen Liverpool, Liverpool play much better than that. And I'm quite thankful they weren't better than what they were tonight, because that could have been even worse. Um, looking down at the notes here, and... Yeah, I've spoken about the other chances. And I just felt tonight, against Man United, before these scores, before Robin Cock went off injured, we went with a different approach, I felt. I didn't feel we pressed as high against Man United. Um, it felt like we were trying to be more compact and hit Man United on the counter a little bit more. 
know, we had a midfield three of Robin Cock, Adam Forshaw, Mateus Click. I'm not going to go too much into my eyes again. I've dissected that one enough. And that's what we kind of went with against Man United. And I kind of felt we'd do the same thing again tonight. But tonight we went with the system that we finished off with against Man United, the 4-2-3-1. We had Click and Forshaw in midfield. And I just felt in midfield it was always a three versus two. And it's not any midfield three either. This isn't, you know, a mid-table midfield three. This is Thiago Alcantara, Fabinho, Curtis Jones. You know, I think certainly Fabinho and Thiago Alcantara, you're talking world-class. You're talking world-class in terms of what they can do on the football pitch. And when they've got the extra space, the man advantage in that midfield, that's the first thing I look at in a game like this, the midfield. Last season, it's the same. You know, I think last season in these kind of games... We were able to obviously have KP available. I'm going to get to talk about KP later on. And then have Dallas ahead and click ahead and have a bit more of a hard-working midfield three. And that's what we went with against Man United, the kind of hard-working midfield three. Tonight, it felt like we accepted it would be a basketball match. And we just you know, had as many attacking players on the pitch as possible. This isn't a criticism of Marcel Bielsa. This is just me explaining what I saw from the game. And you know, in terms of injuries, this is what we're kind of limited to at this moment in time. Um, but tonight, you know, we just really struggled. I think even our press was poor tonight. Um, and some would argue it's been poor for a couple of weeks. I think tonight it was just far, far, far too easy to play through. You know, I'm looking at uh, Joel Matip on the second goal, you know, with the goal he scores and how many times, you know, he's picking the ball up and just driving into that, you know, he's getting up to the halfway line with no pressure. And I know that's the nature of our man-to-man marking, that there's always going to be a spare man at the back. You know, we like to match up man-to-man. It does naturally mean there's always going to be one field, one outfield player left over. And tonight it was Joel Matip. But this is the thing against these top six teams. I think when you play against, no disrespect to him, Burnley, the spare man would be Ben Mee. No disrespect to Ben Mee. He's not going to affect you that much if he's got time on the ball. When you've got the spare man, Joel Matip, who's technically outstanding, he's a fantastic carrier of the ball against a zonal system, never mind the man-to-man marking system, that's the problem we have. Now, I'm not saying change to a zonal system. I'm not criticising Marcelo Bielsa on that. I'm just saying this is the problem we're facing at this moment in time. And maybe some would say we do need to change to a zonal system and maybe... You know, it's a debatable point. <laughs> it's a debatable point at the end of the day. Um, because, you know, from Marcelo Bielsa's post-match um, interview, he's kind of alluding to the fact that we need to keep to the system. And look, many will disagree with that. But when I say I'm not criticising Marcelo Bielsa, let me make it perfectly clear here. I am not happy with what I'm seeing from Leeds United at this moment in time on the pitch. I'm not happy. How can I be happy? How can they be happy with the way we've dropped off from this season? People seem to think, I'm happy with what Leeds are doing this season. I'm not. I think there's extenuating circumstances, but that's a different thing. But tonight, there's no excuses to lose 6-0. I'm sorry. To lose 6-0, 4-2, 3-0, concede the goals we conceded in the last three games. Missing players or not missing players, we haven't got things right. We haven't got things right. It's as simple as that. When you're playing out the back, now, this is the other point I want to make. We're playing out the back. For me, against a top team, when you're playing at the back, you've either got to have top technical quality to do it, or you've got to have an overload in the build-up, where you've got more players in the build-up than the opposition has pressing. So say Liverpool tonight, they're pressing a 4-3-3. The front three, Salah, Mane, Diaz, press very narrowly. Diaz and Salah, you see, they go to the centre-backs. Salah's sitting on Struick. Diaz is sitting on um, Luke Ayling tonight. And then they shuffle across, whichever you know, way we're trying to press play out the back. If we try and play out from the right, they'll shuffle across to the right. If we try and play out from the left, they'll shuffle across to the left. Now, we built up in a 4 2 3 1 today. We didn't have that overload. And we also didn't have the top technical quality without Calvin Phillips on the pitch. You know, look, I love our players. I've said it before, I love our players. But technically, I don't think they stand out against Liverpool. I don't think anyone would argue that. I think other than Adam Forshaw, I don't think there was anyone who was capable 
are playing out the press the way we were trying to today. And it's a shame we didn't have Calvin available. Um, but look, it wouldn't have made much difference tonight. But in other games, it probably will have done. But that's the point. I felt tonight, I wanted to, I wanted to see a midfield free tonight, just to have that overload in the build-up. You know, to have Click and Dallas dropping in as well so we can move that Liverpool press around a little bit easier. You know, I just felt we made it too easy for Liverpool to press us. You know, we're moving it too slowly from side to side. You know, Melier's distribution wasn't great tonight. We're giving the ball away in awful situations. And I don't think anyone really was showing the courage to play out in the back other than Adam Forshaw. And listen, I want to give praise to Adam Forshaw. Adam Forshaw, I thought, had a really good game today. Despite the scoreline, despite the fact we conceded six goals, I thought Adam Forshaw showed fantastic courage. It's not easy. It's not easy when the team, the rest of the team, struggling to make five-yard passes. But Adam Forshaw tonight, he showed that courage to play through the lines, keep keep showing that desire to get on the ball and play through and try and lead the team in that way. I felt Adam Forshaw was the leader on the pitch today, just through how he played. But unfortunately, no one else took his lead for me. You know, in terms of really showing that courage to play out the back. And look, it wouldn't have made much difference, but maybe it would have been less embarrassing tonight. And then they're talking about the press. It just felt sporadic at times today. You know, at times I'm looking at the forward players. You know, Dan James is going on Trent Alexander-Arnold's. I'm um, sorry, Jack Harrison's going on Trent Alexander-Arnold's. Rafinha's going on Andy Robertson. But then the whole team isn't pressing. We're not pressing as a unit. You know, I'm looking at the front four of the 4 2 3 one It's pressing high. But then the defence, not keeping high line, so it's not compact. You know, you're looking at the defence. The defence is sitting back. So all of a sudden, you've got, at one end of the pitch, you've got our back line, you know, trying to make sure, you know, Salah, Mane, uh, Diaz can't run in behind and they're dropping really, really deep. And then you've got the rest of the team pushing really high. Naturally, when you think about it numerically, that's got to leave space somewhere. And the space was in the middle of the pitch. And I've already said about the key thing in these games being the midfield battle. You've then got the extra space for Fabinho, the extra space for Thiago, the fact they've got a 3v2. It was too easy for Liverpool tonight. And people will say, well, that's surely on Marcelo Bielsa. Maybe partly it is on Marcelo Bielsa. I don't know. I don't know what Marcelo... I don't know what Marcelo Bielsa instructs the players. But what I will say is that people give Liam Cooper stick. Liam Cooper is a leader at the back in the sense that Liam Cooper would not... You could say many things about Liam Cooper. Maybe technically he's not as good as the other centre-backs. I don't personally agree with that. But Liam Cooper would not have allowed the back line to have dropped as deep as it did. It would have made sure it stayed aggressive and pressed with the whole team and would have pressed as a unit. Calvin Phillips would have made sure we pressed as a unit. Patrick Bamford would have left, led the press better than anyone. This is the point I'm trying to make. The other players have got to take responsibility and step into these players' shoes you know, I'm looking at, you know, whoever's in that back four, you know, the leaders in that back four, they've got to take Liam Cooper's lead and keep the whole back four high up the pitch. Melier's got to tell the back four to push up the pitch. And sometimes you've got to interpret the situation. You've got to see this, that Thiago's got loads of space. We've got to try and make that midfield more congested and just make sure there's enough bodies in there to deal with that situation. You know, I'm seeing Trent Alexander-Arnold, you know, drop into midfield pick up the ball easily. There's no pressure on the ball. And it's just it's just a bit all over the place at this moment in time. And I just think it's too easy just to put it all on Marcelo Bielsa. I think certain players and the team in general has got to take more responsibility. You know, we've got to see the leaders now stand up, starting from Tottenham. It's got to start from Tottenham now. We are in a bad situation now. Look, I, I love being positive. I'm a very positive person. I'm a glass half full kind of person. That's how I live my life. Uh, not trying to get too deep there, but let's have a living life. I'm very, you know, glass half full. But when I saw that Burnley result, I can't deny I was panicking. Burnley have won two games in a row now. They kept two clean sheets. Burnley were a problem. Burnley were a problem at this moment in time. Sean Dyche is a problem. Sean Dyche has got a lot of experience at this level in these situations. And it's a fact they've got more experience than us in these situations. That's not necessarily going to be the be all and end all. I still think we... I still personally think we have better quality than Burnley. Um, for example, I don't think Burnley have any players of the quality of Rafinha, Calvin Phillips, uh, Patrick Bamford. You know, players like this, um, you yeah, two of those missing. But they are a problem. Burnley are going to be relentless now. Burnley have got nothing to lose. Burnley have shown that mentality in the last couple of weeks and we've got to show that now. 
Um, a couple of other notes. I'm not sure I should be looking at camera, but yeah, I'm just been trying to get this done as quickly as possible, guys. Um, it just feels like everything's too late. The team lacks leadership. Everything's last ditch. We don't see situations develop until this develops. You know, this second goal, Matip, that's really, I can't deny it, that's really pissed me off, that goal. It's pissed me off big time, that goal. Just how we've let Matip stroll 60 yards up the pitch. He's then laid it off into Mo Salah, albeit Mo Salah has played an absolutely unbelievable pass. And it would be churlish of me not to praise the way Liverpool played at times today in terms of some of the quality around that final third, some of the quality on show from that Liverpool team. And you're thinking, this is an absolutely unbelievable Liverpool team. This is a Liverpool team that at the end of the season could quite easily walk away with a League Cup, a Premier League and a Champions League. I think they're still in the FA Cup as well. They've got that much quality and depth of quality as well. Look at the players that came off the bench for Liverpool today. Divock Origi has scored in the Champions League final. James Milner, we all know about. Jordan Henderson is captain Liverpool to a Premier League and Champions League. They had Jota out. They had Firmino out. This is a very good Liverpool team. But that second goal, when Salah's got time to look up, pick out a pass on the outside of his boot, and Matip, the centre-back, has carried on his run and we've not picked it up. And it's also last ditch. The penalties we give away. Yeah, some people have said maybe one or two of the penalties have been soft or the free kicks were given away in recent weeks or the set pieces were given away in recent weeks. But it all comes from being last ditch and making these last ditch sliding tackles. When you go to ground in a Premier League match, you are always at risk of giving away a penalty, a free kick or losing territory or losing the ball or a player skipping past you. You've got to be proactive in situations and stand on your feet and read the situation. You know, I'm thinking Urente obviously giving away the free kicks against Newcastle and Burnley. Yes, I'm going back a couple of weeks ago, but it all comes from the same situation. It's not just one player. The whole team's a little bit last ditch at this moment in time. It's like the whole team is trying to compensate for the Calvin Phillips absence and trying to cover extra spaces that they can't cover and trying to win balls that they can't win. It's all a bit last ditch and rash and it, it doesn't feel... It's not Leeds, this. It's not Leeds. It's not a Marcelo. It's not what you associate with a Marcelo Bielsa team. Not just a, a Leeds Marcelo Bielsa team, a Marcelo Bielsa team. I've said about Forshaw's character. And look, I've seen a few, few things written about and said about Rafinha in recent weeks, but I don't really know what you can expect from Rafinha in a game like that tonight. We had hardly any of the ball. We struggled to pass the ball five yards. Rafinha's not seen much of the ball. He's up against Andy Robertson. He's up against a world-class team that's as compact as you can get. You know, the thing with Liverpool is, I'm looking at them. When we're trying to build out the back, the back line is on the is on the halfway line. Virgil van Dijk is telling that back four to stay on the halfway line. Look, I'm not deluded. I know we haven't got players of that quality, but it's the same kind of principle. The whole team's got to defend as a unit, attack as a unit. And that's something I don't think we're doing at this moment in time. And I, I still think that's more down to individuals than Marcelo Bielsa, on a, for me personally. <sighs> um, let's be totally honest, the performances for most of this season, especially especially away from home, I think have been below par. And I just hope tonight, a lot of people know what I mean by this. This is a Nottingham Forest two years ago moment, where this is the low. This is the low tonight. We've lost 6-0. It could have been more. We're now in a serious situation. Like we were after we lost that Forest game where we could lose that on promotion two years ago. We're now in a situation where we could go down. Let's be totally honest. This league is of high quality. It's of high quality, this league. You know, obviously, you know, you look at what Burnley have got at the top now. Fed, Corst and Corne. You know, the good players are going to score goals for Burnley. They can keep clean sheets. We've got to accept... I'm not just talking about Burnley. Obviously, Everton, Newcastle are in there as well. Watford, you all know they've got hammered tonight. They've still got that Dennis and Saar. You know, teams have got quality now. We've got to accept that. And we've got to wake up now. I don't look, I think we've got the quality, more than the quality to stay up. I think our plan, in terms of Marcelo Bielsa's plan, you've got to break down Marcelo Bielsa's plan in two parts against teams that sit back against us and against teams that press against us. Leads this season against teams that sit back against us and still looks very, very good for me. Very, very good in general. 
You know, looking at that first half, even against Tottenham, when Tottenham sat back against us. And this is against Tottenham. We outplayed Tottenham in the first half. Then they went to press us, and it's turned into a whole different situation in the second half. You know, when teams sit back against us, I think we're fine. I think we've got the quality to break down teams. We're still scoring goals. And that's without a player who last season contributed to 25 goals in Patrick Bamford. 17 goals, 8 assists. We're still able to score goals. We still score score more goals than the teams that are down there. But we can't keep relying on that. We've got to find a way now. And look, when Calvin Phillips comes back into the team, of course it's massive. Of course it's massive. You're talking an England international here. You're talking one of the best holding midfielders in the whole league, the whole of England. That's massive. Patrick Bamford being back is massive. Lean Cooper being back is being massive. But we've got to find a solution outside of that because let's be honest, the last four games, I don't think even with the presence of those three players, the result would have been any different. It might have been a bit less embarrassing. We might not have conceded 13 goals in three games. But we've got to find a way to get this whole team being more aggressive. This whole team being more aggressive in the sense that we're committed to pressing. Marcelo Bielsa is always going to be a manager who's committed to his plan A. His plan A is press high, man-to-man marking. The whole team needs to do it aggressively now. Aggressively. If it's Junior Firpo or Mohamed Salah, he has to be aggressive. He has to be touch tight to Mohamed Salah. No dropping off. No dropping off the whole... Because if Junior Firpo drops off, the whole back line has to drop off. Otherwise, we're playing Liverpool on sides. This is the whole thing. It works as a unit. I'm not a fan of picking on individual players. I wasn't picking on Junior Firpo there because everyone in the back four was doing the same thing. Everyone in the midfield was doing the same thing. We've got to work as a unit now. This is the constant thing under Marcelo Bielsa. And you've got to say as well, and this isn't a Bielsa defence. You know, no one comes out of the last couple of games with any praise at all. But how many players in this team are playing to their usual levels, really? Really, how many players are playing to their usual levels? Not just in the last couple of weeks, all season. They've got to step up now. We've got to step up. This has got to be the Nottingham Forest moment. We've got to go into that Tottenham game aggressive. Aggressive from the first minute. Everyone's compact. The whole team's working together. When we're, pl- when we're defending, we defend as a team. When we attack, we attack as a team. It's not good enough to not do that. No more fancy flicks, fancy tricks, you know, poor body language. No more of that. When you get the ball, you've got to play the five-yard passes. You've got to play the ball of aggression. You've got to make sure it gets to feet. You can't just tap the ball, tippy-tapping. We're not good enough to do that. Liverpool are good enough to do that. We've got to go back to the basics. And that might sound a very 1990s kind of mentality. I've got no problem with pressing high and man-to-man marking against Tottenham on, on Saturday, to be totally honest with you. Because I think Tottenham, they're not as good as Liverpool. Tottenham can be got at. You know, in terms of what Burnley are showing tonight. But Tottenham are still dangerous as well as a show against Man City. But we've got to have that aggression. We've got to play about fear and have that aggression and go back to what we've been doing. But at the same time, we've just got to step up now. To be totally honest with you, we've just got to step up and and sort things out. Because that tonight, nowhere near good enough. You know, I can accept losing 6 0 if it was from Liverpool having six world class attacks that we can do nothing about. I look at them goals. Four, three or four of them, I think, have come from us being too rash, giving away penalties, um, not reacting to the situation quick enough, giving the ball away at the back. And that's another thing, having the courage to play out the back now. You know, We'd still try and play out the back, but what I mean by that is individuals taking responsibility, like Adam Forshaw. I would like to think that players would be looking at Adam Forshaw's performance and thinking, I want to play like that. I want to be like that guy. Yeah, that's, that's for me. I'm, you know, in terms of, I'm not just making this about Adam Forshaw. Adam Forshaw wasn't perfect tonight, but in terms of his attitude, because that was not easy to do. You were at Anfield, the most difficult place to go to in Europe, and you're putting in, you know, you get... you looking for the ball, you're wanting the ball all the time. 
yeah, Adam Forshaw made one or two mistakes, but he never stopped wanting the ball. And that has got to be the mentality of everyone now. If you make a mistake, you can't hide from the ball. And that's what I felt maybe maybe one or two players did. And it's not me having to go at the mentality. I just think subconsciously, you know, thinking I don't want to make a mistake here at Liverpool. And that's understandable, but we've got to snap out of that now. We've got to realise that these next, whatever it is, 11, 12 games, I think it's 10 of 11 games, we've got to now just be aggressive and almost play without fear, even though it's a real dangerous situation we're in. This has been quite a long post-match, but how could it not be? It's um, it's a shocker tonight, let's be totally honest, and it's a real wake-up call, and I hope it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call for me that maybe I have been a little bit too enthusiastic in recent weeks, and we've just got to step up now. I love this group.